Hey everyone, Theo here. In this video, I want to help you figure out which tablet to get for creating digital art. On this table, I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with Apple Pencil 2. This is the 13 inch Microsoft Surface Pro 8 with Slim Pen 2. And this is the 14.6 inch Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra with the Samsung S Pen. Now this video is going to be quite long. If you want to save time, just check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. Let's start with the pricing. The official retail prices for these tablets with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage is US $1,100. Interestingly, they are all priced the same. However, the Surface Pro 8 has been out for several months now, so you can actually get this at $100 to $200 off the official retail price. And you have to factor in spending extra money for the Apple Pencil and for the Microsoft Slim Pen 2. The Samsung S Pen is included with the Samsung tablet. Now just to give you the bottom line up front, if you are looking for a tablet that can do it all, if you are looking for a versatile tablet, Surface Pro 8 is the obvious choice because it's running Windows OS. There is nothing you cannot do here because you have this huge variety of desktop apps and all these desktop apps are the full featured desktop apps. We are talking about Adobe Photoshop, which is the full software. It's not the mobile version of Photoshop that you get on the iPad. You also get the very familiar file system. By the way, my tablet is flickering on the left side because there is some hardware problem. And you also get extended desktop mode so you can connect an external monitor to this tablet. If you want to do live streaming, you can install OBS and do so you can live stream while you record your screen. At the same time, you can connect a microphone and choose the microphone input. So there really isn't anything that the Surface Pro 8 or Windows OS cannot do. My only argument against the Surface Pro 8 is if you already have a computer, then you may not need another computer. And also the battery life of the Surface Pro 8 isn't as good. I was only able to get six hours with auto brightness. With the iPad Pro and the Samsung tablet, I was able to get at least seven and a half hours again with auto brightness. If you are using the tablets outdoors at maximum brightness, the battery life for these three are going to be shorter by one to two hours. If you are currently using Mac OS, it probably makes more sense to get iPad because there are many shared features with iPad OS and Mac OS. For example, there is the sidecar feature which allows the iPad to be used as an external display to your Mac. There is AirDrop where you can share files very easily, wirelessly with the tablet and the Mac. You can use the iCloud for backing up your Mac as well as the tablet. And if you have movies from the iTunes, you can watch the movies that you have purchased on your Mac on the iPad as well. If you are not using a Mac, it may be better to choose the Surface Pro 8 or the Samsung tablet. Ultimately, my recommendation is this. Choose the tablet based on the software you want to use. In terms of drawing capability and the variety of drawing apps, I would say these three tablets, they are equally matched. However, with Android and Google Play Store, there is a lack of graphic design apps. So we are talking about apps that can allow you to set uh, text, uh, typography, there is also a lack of vector apps. If you are not using a Mac, I feel like it's better to get the Surface Pro 8 or the Samsung tablet. But that's not to say that these two tablets are better compared to the iPad Pro. It's just that with a Mac and the iPad Pro, you get more shared features. If you're comparing drawing, performance, and the variety of drawing apps that are available, I would say these three tablets are almost equally matched. Ultimately, my recommendation is this, choose based on the software you want to use and also think about what else you want to do with your tablet other than just drawing. Because when it comes to drawing, these three tablets really are almost equally good. The main downside for the Samsung tablet is the lack of graphic design apps. 
and vector app so if i want to do anything that's related to type or typography or layout it's very challenging to do those things on the Samsung tablet because of the lack of graphic design apps. So that's the bottom line and now let's get into the details where I talk more about the user experience. So I've been using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro for several years now and I have used the Samsung tablet for many years. I have used the Surface Pro tablets on and off for over the years but this year I decided to buy the Surface Pro 8 because the pen performance has improved significantly. More specifically, there is no more diagonal line jitter when you're drawing diagonal lines slowly. These are all big tablets. They are portable, but they are considered heavy, especially when you compare them to 11 inch tablets. So the weight of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch is 682 grams. This is 728 grams and this is 891 grams. So this is noticeably heavier compared to this three. Anyway, when it comes to weight, I would consider this three to be tabletop tablets. When I'm drawing with them, I always set them on a table. If I have to carry them and draw on it, um, I won't be able to do it because they are just too heavy. And when you consider adding a case to the tablets, it's going to make them even heavier. If portability is important to you, these three tablets are out. I would recommend you get an 11 inch tablet instead. I mean, take a look at your current workflow and see whether or not you need to bring the tablets out and about that often. If you are using the tablets mostly at home, you can go with big tablets, no problem. My first iPad Pro was the 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2017, the one with the home button, the thick bezels, the one where you have to charge Apple Pencil at the bottom. That iPad Pro had some issues and it was out of warranty. So I had to buy a new iPad Pro. This is the 2018 iPad Pro. This is not the M1 iPad Pro. I have the M1 iPad Pro and the drawing performance and experience is similar to this older model. So I have been using this for three and a half years. This tablet has four gigs of RAM and it's still very responsive when it comes to drawing. You can create very detailed illustrations, uh, very big files with a lot of layers. Of course, the M1 iPad Pro with 8 gigs of RAM, uh, it's going to be more capable when it comes to creating multi-layered files, very detailed files. But for sketches that you see, uh, um, this will not tax the processor at all. I like the form factor of the iPad because it's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio which makes it very usable, not just in landscape orientation, but also in portrait orientation. And I usually use this at home uh, with a case. I have it set on a stand, so it's heavy, but since it's on a stand, I can still use this very comfortably. If I'm holding the tablet like this with my hand, uh, it's going to get tiring quite easily. So some of these sketches were actually drawn out on location. I brought the tablet outdoors to sketch on location and it's heavy. So as mentioned earlier, if you need portability, go with the 11 inch tablets. iPad Pros from 2018 onwards are using Apple Pencil 2, which attaches to the side of the tablet for charging and for pairing. This is very convenient. Drawing performance of the Apple Pencil is fantastic. It has minimal initial activation force. It has good control over pressure sensitivity. It also has tilt sensitivity. It has very good palm rejection. The iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil is probably one of the earliest tablets, portable tablets that give you such terrific drawing performance and experience, which is why many digital artists um, prefer the iPad Pro. However, nowadays um, competition is very stiff. 
There is the Surface Pro 8 with the improved pen, the Slim Pen 2. There is the Samsung tablets with the Samsung S Pen, which has always been pretty good. The main thing I like about the Apple Pencil 2 is, uh, let me just show you. It's actually this specific feature. Let me switch to a different brush. The lines can taper very beautifully. More specifically, when you draw a line like this, you can see the strokes, they start thin, become thicker and tapers very smoothly and sharply. This is something that is quite difficult to do with the Slim Pen 2 and the Samsung S Pen. I've just switched to the Surface Pro 8 and the Slim Pen 2 to show you what I'm talking about. So the strokes don't taper as naturally compared to what I can get with the iPad Pro. So if you take a look at the strokes here, you can see uh, the width is almost consistent. With the iPad Pro, you get thin, thick and tapers very smoothly. But here you can see the lines, they do taper, but not as smoothly compared to the iPad Pro. This line here, this stroke here actually tapers really nicely. It starts thin, thick and becomes thin again. But the performance, as you can see, it's not consistent across all these different strokes. This app is Clip Studio Paint. You can probably tweak the brush to the extent where you can get the lines to look just like the lines you get on the iPad. However, you will have to tweak the brush and it takes some time to actually tweak the brushes, um, all the brushes that you need to use. The Apple Pencil and the Slim Pen 2 are not included and are sold separately. If I remember correctly, the price is US $129. Now with the Slim Pen 2, if you have the Surface Pro 8 and this pen, just like this, there is no way to charge the pen. So you need another accessory just to charge the pen. I have this type cover, which has this slot for charging the Slim Pen 2. If you do not have the type cover, you will have to buy some USB charger just to charge the pen. So that's extra cost. When you are charging the pen, you are also pairing the pen with the tablet. The Slim Pen 2 has minimal initial activation force, has good control over pressure sensitivity. The only thing I don't like about this pen is the tapering strokes. They just don't look as natural. So if you need that extra level of accuracy with your line art, maybe the Apple Pencil is the better choice. Slim Pen 2 also supports tilt sensitivity and has fantastic palm rejection. The pen is designed like a carpenter's pen. This is quite easy to get used to. It's very comfortable to hold. There is one side button here and an eraser at the back. However, customization for these two buttons is very limited. And this is the line quality you can get with the Samsung S Pen. Again, you can see the lines, they don't taper as naturally. I don't see the thin, the thick and the thin. They do taper quite smoothly and sharply. It's just the starting uh, point or uh, the start of the line. It's not quite what I want. The Samsung S Pen has very minimal initial activation force, has good control over pressure sensitivity, has fantastic palm rejection and this pen does not require charging and you do not need to pair the pen with the tablet it's paired permanently and it's included with the tablet so you don't have to spend extra money to buy this unlike the apple pencil and the microsoft slim pen 2 the samsung s pen has a rubberized tip so when you are drawing there is no tapping sound. As to how smooth or slippery the pens are when drawing on glass surface, I would say they are equally smooth. With the Apple Pencil and the Slim Pen 2, 
they have hot tips so if you want to you can apply a matte screen protector over your tablet to get that extra tactile experience when you're drawing if you apply a matte screen protector over the Samsung tablet and draw with the Samsung S Pen it's going to wear off the rubber tip like really fast I no longer use matte screen protectors because they affect the image quality of the display and I've already gotten used to drawing on glass these three tablets have different aspect ratio. This is 4x3, this is 3x2, and this is 16x10. So the Samsung tablet has the much wider aspect ratio. When the display is small, aspect ratio is more important. But when the display is big, these three tablets are considered big. Aspect ratio isn't as important now because despite the aspect ratio of the display you still get a lot of space to work with you can have space for the palettes on the left and on the right side and still get a good amount of space to work with these two aspect ratios work great with both landscape and portrait orientation this will work better with portrait orientation compared to this compared to this this works better with landscape orientation compared to portrait orientation. It looks a bit weird, but due to the sheer size of this display, it is still very usable in portrait orientation. Let's compare the size of these three tablets to an A5 size sketchbook. So this is how big the 14.6 inch display is compared to this A5 size sketchbook and this is 13.3 inch display with the sketchbook you can place palettes on the side here and still get an A5 size canvas to work with same applies to the iPad Pro Let's talk about the variety of apps available on iPad versus Android and Windows. In my opinion, the variety of drawing apps available on the different platforms is not the differentiating factor between the three tablets because you can get a huge variety of fantastic drawing apps on these three tablets. The differentiating factor to me as a visual content creator is what other apps are there besides the drawing apps. So on the iPad, you have very good graphic design apps such as Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer. You also have this vector app called Vectornator. These are apps that are not available on the Samsung tablet. These are apps that are not available on the Android ecosystem. These two apps are available on Windows. The iPad Pro has no advantages when it comes to graphic design over Windows because the mobile apps that you have here, um, the features are not the full features that you can get with desktop apps. For example, this is a page layout that I have created with Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. When I open the app, straight away Adobe tells me that there are some features missing. And the tools and the functionality that you see here, it's a subset of the full features that you can get with the desktop app. And with the desktop, you can use keyboard and mouse and the pen if you want to. It's way more productive when it comes to graphic design work on the Surface Pro 8 compared to the iPad. You can use keyboard and the pen as well, but for me, it's just way more productive with mouse or keyboard and the pen on the Surface Pro 8 on Windows. So to create graphic design or page layout such as this with Android, currently it's not possible due to the lack of graphic design apps. If you want to create a YouTube thumbnail and put some text over the thumbnail or the photo, yes, it can be done with the drawing apps here, um, Clip Studio, Krita, um, they will allow you to put text over photos, you can even itch out the photos, uh, do selections and all that. But when it comes to typography, typesetting, uh, paragraph styles, wow, um, 
There are many wonderful and capable drawing apps on Android. However, when it comes to graphic design, it is currently lacking. And now let's talk about the things I don't quite like about each tablet. With the iPad Pro, I don't like the file management system. The file management system on the iPad Pro is extremely basic and there are a lot of glitches with the files app. If you are transferring files and the file transfer for some reason fails, you will get an orphan file which you cannot delete. And sometimes when you want to open a certain file, you know you can open it, but for some reason the files app just doesn't allow you to open. Those are just two of the many, many glitches I was able to find. With Windows and Android, the file system is the file system that you have been working with for decades. So they are very familiar file system. You can do anything you want to do with the file system on Windows and on Android. The other thing I don't like about iPad is support for external monitor is lacking. If you connect an external monitor to the iPad, it's just going to mirror what's shown on the iPad. There are just a handful of apps that can take advantage of external displays. For example, with Procreate, when you draw on the tablet, your art can be reflected here on a bigger screen. If you are watching a movie, the movie can play on the bigger screen. But other than that, um, most of the time you are just going to get mirror mode which is not that useful as you can see with windows you get proper external display support you can drag your windows from the left to the right and back so this is just much better for productivity with the samsung tab s8 ultra there is the samsung dex feature so when you connect an external display to the tablet you can actually use this as the desktop mode. So you have the Android tablet mode and you have the desktop mode. You will not be able to drag the windows or apps from one display to the other though, but you can open two different apps or the same apps on the two displays. This is still much more useful compared to what you get with the iPad Pro. The thing I don't like about the Surface Pro 8 is just the battery life. So I can get around six hours of battery life with auto brightness. With these two tablets, I can get seven and a half hours at least. So battery life is all right, but longer battery life would be better. The thing I don't like about the Samsung tablet is actually not about the Samsung tablet, it's about the Android ecosystem. It's the lack of graphic design apps. So that's the only thing I don't like about this tablet, which is the lack of graphic design apps from the Android ecosystem. In terms of hardware, these three tablets are very capable. So I don't think you should choose the tablet based on the hardware specifications. Um, Choose the tablet based on what you want to do with them. Choose based on the software you want to use. I have a lot more to say about these tablets, but I don't want to make this video one hour long. So just go check out the text review that I have already written. In terms of value for money, um, these three tablets, they do provide good value for money. Because the Surface Pro 8 has been out for a while now, and you can get this on discount, I would say this would provide better value for money compared to the iPad and the Samsung tablet. Simply because it's more affordable, relatively speaking, and it's running Windows OS, so it's more versatile compared to iPad OS and Android. That's all the information I wanted to share with you guys regarding these three tablets. If you have other questions, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video is useful. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.